For the first time, China has announced it's willing to join a legally binding agreement to cut greenhouse gas pollution. The move could change the course of climate negotiations in Durban, South Africa. This is Shia Shenhua, vice chair of China's National Development and Reform Commission, speaking through an interpreter. We accept a legally binding arrangement is with a condition, with a precondition. China's conditions would require developed nations to extend their binding commitments to cut pollution under the Kyoto Protocol, and to make good on promises to give poor nations financing and technology to help cut their own pollution. And China is not willing to join such an agreement right away. She has suggested a date of 2020, but it's still a huge step forward for the country, which recently surpassed the United States as the world's largest emitter of greenhouse gases. U.S. negotiators said they'd not yet met with China to discuss its new position. U.S. climate envoy Todd Stern. In order for there to be a legally binding agreement that makes sense, all the major players are going to have to、uh, be in. There's no conditionality. They're not conditional on receiving technology or financing. The next four days will show whether the U.S. is willing to loosen its position and move the talks forward. The announcement comes after a weekend of protest in the streets of Durban over the climate talks. Brian Edwards Teekert files this report. On Saturday, thousands sang and danced their way through the streets of Durban to demand more and better from the Conference of Parties, or COP for short. My name is Treya. I'm from Soweto, Chobek. We are here to make the government aware that our cries have been there, but nobody's attending to them. Glaciers are melting in rub of the world, Tibet, and we want UN to pressure to China stop damming in Tibet, which causes green gases. To become visible,、um, half of those that are not on the inside and accredited. Some marchers were official delegates from the talks. My name is Claire Andere, and I come from the island of Kiribati. My country is have only two meters above sea level, and so we are affected by coastal erosion. Water becomes salty. Our crops are dying. What do you think of what's happening inside the talks? From what I get, a、um, lot of countries like Canada, the states, and other rich countries that、uh, they. They want to pull out, and they, they they don't want to support, and it's kind of frustrating and very sad for for our side. In front of Durban's International Conference Center, the president of the talks, South African Foreign Minister Maite Nkwana Mashabane, came out to receive the marchers' demands. Is that we are going to read through this document because civil society is a very important component of the COP. It was a position they had to give to people, but actually, at the end of the day, they're going to go back and do business as usual. Bobby Peak of Groundwork South Africa, and that's why it's important that we push in there to to make sure that the Durban mandate. <laughs> Definitely doesn't go ahead because Africa will burn. I mean, Africa it will result in immense suffering in Africa if that Durban mandate goes ahead. The Durban mandate is shorthand for what activists expect from the talks: an agreement that lets the Kyoto Protocol's legally binding pollution cuts expire, and pushes any new commitments back as far as the year 2020. Officially, the South African government's positions are in line with many of the protesters. They want an extension of the Kyoto Protocol and funding from wealthy nations to help poor ones adapt to the climate change that's already unavoidable. In practice, the South African government has helped push through two massive coal-fired power plants currently under construction. Local activists charge they will largely serve transnational mining and refining businesses, not help poor South Africans, and the government's supporters do not tolerate that kind of criticism. Halfway through the march, bottles and stones fly through the air. The instigators: hundreds of youth whose green tracksuits bear the logos of both the conference and the city. Youth members of the ruling African National Congress. During the week, they're official conference volunteers. During the march, they tore down banners, burned signs critical of South African President Jacob Zuma, and physically attacked activists from the Democratic Left Front. 
Living with Jacob Zuma, they are saying Zuma is a rapist. We are ANC, you click, we can't thoroughly distinct. What we endured was the use of public finance, the financing of these volunteers in the name of the city, these goons, to attack us. That's Vishnu Saka of the Democratic Left Front. He and other march organizers say they're pressing charges against the individuals responsible for the violence. Brian Edwards Tiekert, Free Speech Radio News, Durban. As world leaders attempt to reach an agreement in Durban, a new report shows global greenhouse emissions continue to rise. The Global Carbon Project analysis released Sunday shows a surge in emissions of 5.9 percent last year, due in large part to the rise of burning coal.